is our Deliver, and we're so glad that you are joining us on Hope today. And you know, before we get started, you see it's Angel Madden, Pastor Jay. We have a very special co-host with us today. Pastor Jay, can you introduce our special co-host? Yeah, like I have my son here. <laughs> he just had a birthday last week, and uh, he wanted to come to the fundraising event, but we couldn't work it out. So I guess it's Bring Your Parent to Work Day. So he's got his suit on looking good. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> So he's here today, so good to have you today and uh, good to be with you guys. It's going to yeah. be an exciting time. Yeah, it's really going to be an exciting time and we're so glad that you are joining us. And so we are just super excited because we know that God is moving all around the earth. And Pastor Jay, can you tell us about our guests that we're going to have on the program on the show today? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited because not only is my son here, but my wife is here. Uh, she doesn't come to my stuff, but when Pastor Greg Locke shows out, you know, come out in Jesus' name, she runs to the studio. And I tell you what, it is going to be a powerful, powerful show. You are not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to stay tuned because, you know, God is really doing something in the area of deliverance. Yeah. Yes. And this man, his testimony and what God is doing, it is outstanding. It's powerful. I'm excited to dive in. <laughs> You know, I think, Angela, do you have any experiences like personally with deliverance that you've got walked through and gone through? Oh, yes, girl. I think deliverance, as Pastor Greg, when we get into the interview, we'll talk more. I think it's a huge missing element within a lot of our churches today, and it is critical. I've seen students, adults, older adults get delivered from the demonic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like we shouldn't shy away from it. I, I'll personally say I've been delivered and I've received it. Yes. And so I think it is so important, just what Angela was saying, that in churches, it is paramount. It's what yes. Jesus yeah. did. He cast out demons. He yes. cast out devils. We should not be afraid of it. And so Absolutely. I just know it is so powerful. Like I will just quickly share, like I had an experience where I, like my, I had a spiritual mom that she was operated in deliverance and then I received it before. And the way that God broke through and the strongholds yeah. were broken, the torment that was broken, the generational curses that were passed down from my family. Come on, I know there's a lot of us that we come from families, like I have a Caribbean background. I mean, there's witchcraft, there's all this stuff that has to be broken. Yes. And it is so powerful when we experience that. So you definitely wanna stay tuned with our interview with Pastor Greg Locke. And you know, one thing, you know, that's just so powerful that I know many of you, we had a chance all across the country to celebrate and to honor the National Day of Prayer. I'd actually had a chance to go down to Market Square. We have some video that we wanna share with you right now. You see it appearing on your screen. It was so beautiful. There was like dozens of people came out, um, different uh, pastors and leaders from across the area were praying, lifting up the name of Jesus. And you know, Angela and Pastor Jay, something that was so amazing is that you see right there, people, you know, just walking through the streets, business leaders that you see there on the streets praying. There was four people that gave their life to Christ on. on the National Day of Prayer down in Market Square. Mm -hmm. So it was so beautiful. Then I was like, oh, there's me. I was, <laughs> I was out there, there you are, there you see me out there just praying. And um, it was just so, such a powerful time of, you know, worship and just the body of Christ gathering together. And you know, one thing I think about, you know, Jay and uh, Angela is just what Miss Norma said is that everyone ought to know who Jesus is. And when she was walking on the streets of Pittsburgh, that was her heart's cry. And just being down there just made it become so more alive like how important it is that Cornerstone Television Network is here. And we are just so thankful for your partnership and all that you do to help us running, to help us keep the good news of the gospel out. And we just want to say a big thank you for all of you who participated in our fundraiser, Hope Arising, last week. And we want to give you an update. So we have met 70% of our goal. We want to thank you so, so much. We have more than $140,000 raised and we still have 60,000 left to go. So, you know, there's still time to give and to sow into Cornerstone, which is good ground here at our ministry. So prayerfully consider we are just so thankful for each and every one of you and your partnership. So you can give us a call at 888-665-4483. And we just want to say thank you. It is an honor for us to serve you for more than 44 years here in the Pittsburgh area. Well, it looks like I need to go into some fundraising mode here, huh? <laughs> yeah, we still got a little bit left to go here. Yeah. So y'all gonna make me work a little more, but no, I'm so excited though for our next guest. He is on fire for the Lord and he's hungry for revival. Pastor Greg Locke's new film, Come Out in Jesus' Name, follows him and a diverse group of unconventional preachers as they begin to spark one of the most important awakenings in the history of the Christian church through the most unlikely means. Check out this new trailer. My hope is that more and more people will stop being embarrassed by something that Jesus did more than anything else in the entire three and a half years of his ministry. We're not following after the signs. The signs are following after the truth, and revival is coming back to truth. 
biblical truth. There's nothing more biblical than setting people free from the influence of demonic activity. Deliverance leads to reformation. Reformation leads to revival. You can't fight something that you don't know is there. The first deliverance Jesus did was not in a nightclub. It was in a synagogue. The first time the demon manifested, it happened right in the church. I commit every spirit of depression. It's happening in the streets, even if it's not happening in the church. We allow things in our school system that should not be allowed. Heavenly Father, today I claim victory over Satan by putting on the whole armor of God. And we've been trained in the American church, which is far too American and not enough church, to show up and have a service whether God shows up or not, and that is unacceptable. We've seen too much. It's been taken out of the box, and we're not going back. Never seen such a nefarious plan against our children. It was always about our children. It's always been about the kids. It's always been about the children. <laughs> Jesus is coming for a spotless, pure bride. Deliverance ministry should be common. It should have never went away. And there are a lot of suits and ties in pulpits around America saying, oh no, deliverance is not for today. Well, my question is, where'd all those demons go that Jesus cast out? did all those demons go that Jesus cast out? Well, we have Pastor Greg here. Welcome, sir, to answer that question on Hope Today. So glad to have you today. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. Well, I don't think I need to give any more of an introduction than that right there. <laughs> I think not only do the people now know you, I know hell's already on notice uh, that you are <laughs> alive and well and Jesus is alive and well within you. Uh, to start off, I think you're new here to Cornerstone Television Tell us just a little bit about what you're doing down there in Nashville, about your church and your family so that people get to know you at home. Yeah, absolutely. I was an evangelist for about 11 years. I tell people I had seven suits and seven sermons, and I just would go all over the nation. I did it for 48 states, 15 countries. And in 2006, I had a burden for my hometown just outside of Nashville. And so we just left all of it, came back home, started a church from scratch in a high school auditorium, and things just began to take off. You know, we've had our ebb and flow, our ups and downs, but deliverance ministry, really the five-fold ministry, completely exploded our church. I was a strict cessationist. I was against any of this, right? I was against all signs, miracles, tongues, wonders. I tell people jokingly, I thought deliverance was a Burt Reynolds movie, right? I knew nothing <laughs> about any of this. Uh, I was taught to ignore it and to dismiss it. And three or four years ago, God showed up at our church, embarrassed me in front of thousands of people, and it was the greatest embarrassing moment that I've ever had in my life because it brought us to this interview today. And now we went from a 300-seat wedding chapel to a 3,000-seat tent. We've baptized almost 9,000 people in three years in a horse trough, and people just keep showing up, showing up, showing up, and God just keeps showing out. And so it's unbelievable the move of God that we're experiencing right now. Now, Pastor Greg, you had mentioned an embarrassing moment that happened. Tell us a little bit more about that embarrassing moment. Now, you were a Baptist, and now you said you've gotten out of cessationism. What happened? What brought about that? Tell, go a little deeper into that and ex share with the people at home how you came out of uh, cessationism. Absolutely. I had actually been preaching on the gifts of the Spirit for a couple of years, even before the first deliverance-related issue happened. But I never saw it going into the supernatural that way, right? I started preaching on, you know, the, the miracles and the signs of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so I started to operate more into that. My wife began to operate in that. People need to understand, I came out of religion. She came out of a ditch of addiction. So she didn't have to unlearn anything. She just took the Bible for face value, whereas I had kind of a seminary-trained denominational lens 
And so as we begin to walk in the fivefold and more in the gifts, I was introduced to Derek Prince Ministries, Win Worley, and uh, some of the greats of the past in deliverance, uh, Apostle Ivory in Philadelphia. And so I began to watch some of these videos and read some of these books, and I thought, you know, that seems kind of fantastical. I know demons are real. And then one day, lo and behold, we were on the live stream in one of our tent meeting services, and I was going to baptize a grandmother. And when I turned around, she was actually holding her granddaughter in her arms. And certainly to me as a Baptist, I was like, you know, what is this, a two-for-one deal, you know? And so I didn't want to embarrass her on the live stream and tell her she couldn't do that. So I figured, well, she knows something I don't. And so she had this little nine-year-old girl in her arms. And so I began to baptize the grandmother, and we were fine. But when I tried to put that young lady in the water, she literally manifested a full-blown cat right before our very eyes. Her eyes changed. Her voice changed. She began to hiss and growl. She stood up immediately out of the water, just like a cat would, and put her fingers out. It looked like her, you know, her claws were coming at us. And I'll be honest, I felt like she was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I had pastored a very large church at that moment with a massive live stream audience online. And I was embarrassed, not that she was manifesting a demon, because I immediately knew what it was. I was embarrassed that I didn't know what to do. I pastored a big church, had four best-selling books, and couldn't cast a demon out of a nine-year-old girl. And it was that moment that God said, all right, I've got some things to teach you. Mm -hmm. And so I always get very emotional uh, when I tell the story. So that night, because we couldn't find the little girl, my wife went through the tent looking for her. That night, my wife and I just wept, and we cried before the Lord. And there were no cameras around or nothing. And we said, God, how have we missed it? How could we let that little girl leave our church and, and still be in that much bondage? And it was at that moment that we said, Holy Spirit, if you will teach us, we will lose every friend we have. We will walk away from every religion we have to walk away from. Just train us. Teach us how to do the ministry of Jesus. And from that moment till now, hundreds of thousands of people have been impacted by deliverance ministry. I am the least likely man on the planet to lead a deliverance movement. Well, Pastor, you mentioned that you'd have to walk away from friends, denomination, all those things. Did some of that happen? Did you have to walk away or did you see a lot of people that saw what God was doing and like almost like what Jesus said, believe for the very work's sake and they decided to transition over? What, what, have you, what has been your experience with the people that you walked with before you came out of that? Well, in the church, it was miraculous, and it was a great experience because even in the movie, I talk about the fact I was nervous to start preaching and broach the subject of casting out demons. But when I did, I, I did it on a Wednesday night, kind of a, a soft launch, you know. I didn't want to do it to the big crowd on Sunday. But the moment I mentioned the direction we were going, the whole church lit up like an active volcano. They began to clap and hoot and holler and whistle. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, okay, son, see there? If you will obey me, I already had the people prepared long before the shepherd was prepared. Now, a lot of friends did walk away, not people in the church, but ministry-type friends. And, of course, my, my seminary, they probably wouldn't spit on me if I caught fire in the parking lot. And so a lot of meetings started to cancel. But now we've come full circle because what's happening is these preachers are starting to see torment, oppression, and demonic flare up in their church. And guess who they're calling? The guy that they threw under the bus a few years ago that they said was crazy. And so now we've been able to reach back in to that church culture and help lead some of those people out. Pastor, what would you say? There are a lot of people out there that don't believe in the gifts. And I love what it says at the end of the trailer there. What happened to those devils that Jesus cast out? What would you say to people that are home? Maybe that go to a Baptist church or maybe they're Presbyterian or Catholic. Don't believe, well, Catholics believe in exorcism, but, uh, but don't believe necessarily in casting out devils in the gifts of the spirit. What would be the greatest way that you feel you could reach those people and help them to tap into that level? Well, everybody knows it's a reality, especially in the church world. They just don't want to talk about it. It's like the demonic elephant in the room. We can't talk about that because people will think we're crazy. Well, we have to recognize the fact this was the number one ministry of Jesus. It's a third of what he did, right? Jesus only turned water to wine one time. He only walked on the water once, calmed the storm once, raised two dead people other than himself. There, there's most miracles Jesus did were what we call kind of a one and done theologically, maybe twice at most. But Jesus cast out so many demons that Mark said on two occasions, and many demons came out. If the Holy Spirit says many, then many happened. And there was one occasion it happened all night long. It's like every other chapter. And then in Mark chapter 1, once he cast the first demon out of a man in the synagogue, it then says he went through every synagogue in Galilee casting out evil spirits. This is the number one ministry of Jesus. And then he, of course, ordains the 12, gives them power to do it, ordains the 70, gives them power to do it. 
and then gives power to everyone that believes to do it. Then it carries over to the authority of the local church. And here we are today trying to deny the reality of the number one ministry of Jesus. So my question is, if Jesus did this more than anything else, why is it the last thing that we're talking about in the church world? Pastor Greg, I love how you're saying it is the number one ministry of Jesus. And I think we all have to let that sink in because that is the truth. We read it in the gospels and from your experience and just through this movement and even with the other pastors and those that are around you that they're ushering in and just walking through like deliverance ministry. What have you found when people are delivered, they come on the other side that they're set free, that they realize is the biggest misconception when it comes to deliverance? I think what the movie did was it took a lot of the spookiness, a lot of the fantastical nature out of it, because it's not all screaming and throwing up and running around and people levitating off the floor. Obviously, that stuff happens, right? But it, it gave it a theological framework, and people were like, oh, wow, there's a lot of verses in the Bible in the New Testament about demons and how to expel them, how to drive them out. And so I think the biggest misconception is how people are going to manifest. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, whatsoever is made to manifest is of the light. When you turn the light on, the cockroaches scatter. So when you turn on the light of the gospel and you just absolutely bathe people in the love of the Father, the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. And so those demons can't handle that. So what happens is when you have a room of authority, Mark chapter 1, Jesus taught with authority. It caused a demon to come out. That man had been sitting in the synagogue for a long, long time. But the rabbis didn't have enough authority, at least they didn't walk in that authority, to drive the demon out. So now what happens when people come to our church, it's not a Greg Locke deal, it's not a, a Tysha Locke deal or a Global Vision deal, it's a gospel deal. But we have so much authority that we are walking in, and we've done so much discipleship through deliverance, that when people come to our church, that when they drive on our campus, and the gravel begins to crunch under their tires. I'm telling you, people start manifesting demonic activity almost immediately. So the common misconception is that everybody's going to respond the same. Nope. Everybody responds different. But the results are the same. And the result is you get peace that you've never had. Because the number one responsibility of a demon in the kingdom of darkness is to take away your peace. And they don't care how they do it. They just want to rob you of your peace. Deliverance will give you your peace back. Pastor Greg, is it just for pastors? Is it just for church leaders? Um, what do you feel is the purpose of deliverance in regards to the body, in regards to how we walk it out? Um, can a regular lay person do it? Can anybody do it? And if so, is there training that's developed, uh, that needs to happen? And what do you guys offer in order to help people to be able to operate in that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a wonderful question because, you know, Jesus plainly said that deliverance is the children's bread. And then in Acts 10, 38, Jesus did not separate his deliverance ministry from his healing ministry. I tell people all the time, a lot of folks don't understand. They've been praying for a healing for 20 or 30 years that they're never going to get because they don't need healing. They need deliverance from a spirit of infirmity. And when they get deliverance from a spirit of infirmity, they will be automatically healed because by his stripes, we are healed. And so what we find is that we use deliverance as discipleship. Because yes, obviously like me or some others, there are people that are graced for deliverance. Some people have a deliverance anointing. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I never noticed that one of the nine gifts of the Spirit was discerning of spirits. Well, people in deliverance ministry need that because you need to know what to call out because names and authority are important when it comes to demons. But anybody, according to Mark chapter number 16, can cast out demons, not those with a degree or a PhD. In my name shall those that believe Amen. cast out devils. Yeah. Do we need training? Absolutely. And so we offer training. One of the things we found is that we have so many pastors contacting us that about every three months, we bring in about 150 pastors and their wives, and elders and deacons, and you know worship leaders and small group leaders. And my wife and I and our team take two and a half full days. We train them in deliverance. We dispatch them and we teach them, look, you can do this take this back. We started a Global Vision Freedom Network so people can find deliverance ministries in their area and how to receive literally weekly training. Because again, it's not just a, a one and done. We want people to understand that you need to maintain your deliverance. That's right. So to answer the question, I'm a pastor, so I go a long way around the That's barn right. and preach, but to answer the question, anybody that has been saved by the grace of God and filled with the Holy Spirit can cast out demons. But don't just willy-nilly 
walk into the kingdom of darkness and start throwing out demons because what will happen will be the same thing to happen in the book of Acts. Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who in the wide world do you think you are? Demons will call you out. You want to live in the fear of the Lord and walk in holiness because demons are not afraid of your arrogance, but they are terrified by your authority through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is so good, Pastor Greg. I'm eating this up. If you have a pastor right now who is watching and they're intimidated by it, you know, they're scared to actually step into this space, what can you offer them today to begin this Sunday service with that will help them to step, take one step closer into the true authority they have as a believer? Well, I was absolutely terrified of it. I thought this is the most crazy, fantastical, charismaniac thing in all the world. And so I just had to pray, Lord, if it's real, you're going to have to show me. So what I tell preacher friends and even preacher enemies, those that hate me, I say, look, this may sound abrasive, but I'm praying that this Sunday you have a demonic manifestation in your church service and you don't know what to do with it. Because sometimes you've got to be forced to understand this is a reality. And when a demon is forced out into the open, it, it's the same way Derek Prince got involved in it, the great general of deliverance. It happened to, I think, his pianist on the platform. And then everybody's like, oh my goodness, this just happened. It's the elephant in the room. And so my prayer is that these pastors will say, Holy Spirit, I will follow you. I will obey you no matter what happens, no matter who walks away. So show it to me in a service so everybody can see it at one time. And what you'll be surprised about is that will happen. And so when they come to our church and we train them, I tell them, I promise you, when you go back this weekend, people are going to start calling. Something's going to happen in the parking lot. Something's going to happen in a deacon's meeting. Something's going to happen more than likely in a worship service. And without fail, 100 times out of 100, it always does. So we have Baptists, Pentecostals, Church of God that come to us that don't believe in deliverance. So we walk them through deliverance personally. And then once they've experienced it, they're like, wow, holy smokes, how did I miss this? And then I tell them, we're going to train you best we can. We're going to send you home, and it's going to happen. And every single time they go home, and it happens. Because as the brother said a moment ago, once you're on the devil's radar, once you're in hell's network, they will find you everywhere you are they will find you. And now we have people by the hundreds and hundreds every week that sleep in our parking lot, that show up, and they're just waiting for deliverance. We had a lady show up yesterday. She knocked on the office door, and she said, hey, uh, my therapist sent me here and said that this church can help me with deliverance. And so we've got psychologists and therapists and counselors sending people to our church because they know there are some things only God can fix. Amen. You know, Pastor Greg, I'm sure there's people watching right now. Uh, I have heard even actually of testimonies already of people that are watching this in the movie theaters. And if you haven't seen it, ladies and gentlemen, you need to get out and go check it out. My wife and I have seen it. It is outstanding. But we've heard that people are getting delivered even in the middle of the movie theater. I wanted to know if you could take a minute right now, just pray for those. I'm sure there are those that are watching right now that are battling. Some may not even realize they're dealing with demonization and things along that line or being demonized. Would you just take a minute and just pray and minister and just allow the Holy Spirit to use you? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me say this just before I pray. If there is anybody that you need to forgive, the number one thing that will keep you from receiving peace and deliverance is bitterness and unforgiveness because a demon knows their rights. They know their authority and they have a covenant with you. They have authority not to cross the barrier of your bitterness. So if there's an abuser that you need to forgive, not because they were right, but because you want to be right. Forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. If there's a father that abandoned you, an ex-husband, an ex-wife, a pastor that broke your heart, just you just need to forgive them right now. And so as you're doing that, I just want to, I want to talk to these spirits a little bit. Yes. And I come against every spirit of unforgiveness right now that is inside anyone that is watching this broadcast right now or will watch later. We come against every form of witchcraft, yes. every generational yes. curse yes. that has been placed upon you, every word curse of failure and abandonment and rejection that has been spoken over you. We break that right now through the power of the blood of Jesus, through the name of the blood of Jesus. So Father, I come to you right now for every man, every woman, every young person that is watching this. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to go through every room in their temple and unlock every room and fill them and flood them to overflowing in every area 
that the enemy has left them vacant. Father, we come against every spirit of witchcraft. Yeah. We come against every spirit of unforgiveness. We come against every single spirit of grief yes. that someone is yes. walking through right now. Father, oh, would you just sure. begin to allow them to manifest all that hurt, all that trauma from their past, just bring it all the way up through the power of the name of the Lord Jesus, that people can be set free right now in Jesus' name. Lord, give them grace to forgive. Give them grace to walk this out. Father, help them to know that we will help them. May they reach out to this ministry, to our ministry. We will help them walk through the principles of deliverance. Lord, your word says perfect love cast out fear. So right now, we just command in the mighty name of Jesus yes. that the love of the Father yes. would just come upon every single person yes. watching this. We drive out every enemy of fear. Every demon of fear right now, every phobia, you must come up and out yes. through the powerful name yes. of the Lord Jesus. We have authority, evil spirits, Lord and you know it. Shot. And so we come against you now. We speak peace. We release a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. So, Father, do in these people right now what only you can do. Holy Spirit, minister to them through this screen right now, and may they know that even when we get off this broadcast in a few moments, they have authority in the name of Jesus. May they take that authority and say, enemy, come out of me in Jesus' mighty name. We believe for it. We receive it. Set people free, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Greg. Come out in Jesus' name. We'll put all the information of how you can see that up on our webpage. Thank you, Pastor Greg, for what you're doing down there in Nashville and around the world. God bless you. God bless you guys. Well, I tell you what, the demons have fled in Jesus' name, Sydney. Woo, they have. I just, my heart is so full and so stirred because deliverance, when you experience it, there is great joy that comes from it. It is not, I know sometimes there's so many misconceptions, Angela, about what it is, but I am telling you, I have seen it. I just want to share even one time at my like church, like years ago, we were doing communion and a demon just started, just this woman just wow. started screaming. Mm. And it was such a beautiful picture and of just the love of the church. I mean, I've yes. seen it break out in <laughs> services and I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. Somebody's getting set free. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and really we need it. You know, we all yeah. talk about the fruit of the spirit. We want to function in the fruit of the spirit. But deliverance is critical for that. You know, we can't be afraid and shy away from these spaces that Jesus did so much in. We want and we look around at a culture that is deceived and desperate and destitute. And if we want to see our culture, our world set free, we must be believers who know our authority. And when we know it, we'll see deliverance. Amen. Oh, Amen. yes, yes. So we are just so grateful that you've just been partaking in this. And just remember, deliverance was Jesus's number yes. one ministry. Mm -hmm. And when you're open to it, when you lay down your defenses, when you surrender all, I am telling you, because I've experienced it, you will never be the same again. You'll be set free, you'll be healed, you will be on fire for God. Mm -hmm. And that's what we desire for you. We love you. Have a great day.